fun. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about real music in real time for real people just like you right there and just like me right here. And yes, very special guest today, old friend of mine. Man, I just, you know, the time I got to go up to Ohio, that's what I, I think about when I think of the amazing bass playing and vocal stylings of Mr. Paul Seuss from the Journey Escape Tribute Band, the number one Journey Tribute Band in all the world. How you doing, Paul? I'm doing great, Dave. How are you today? I'm doing all right. I <laughs> want to give you a big intro, you know? So they yeah, say it's, Journey it's, it's, Escape it's, and Tribute, you know? That's what we got to get in there. Um, yeah. How you how you been? I know this has been a wacky year for you guys. You had a lot of gigs lined up, and then poof, they went away. Yeah, it's been a crazy year. Uh, we did a show on February 29th, you know, Leap Day, up here in Akron, Ohio. Yeah, and we had somewhere between 45 and 50 shows on the calendar for this summer. Wow! Since February 29th, we have done three shows. We did one at a campground in Southern Ohio. We did one at like a street festival kind of thing in Decatur, Indiana. And then we did another one. It was kind of a last second thing at a fairly large winery outside of Pittsburgh a few weeks ago. Um, and that's been it. Um, yeah. You know, everything else is shut down, locked down. There's a theater that we played in Pennsylvania. We've played there before out in Scranton. And uh, we pretty much sold it out the first time we played there a couple of years ago. And we rented it to go back there to play again this year. But the state of Pennsylvania, their capacity is limited to 25 people in the theater. So nobody <laughs> can make any money if you've got 25 people at a show. Wow. So uh, it's been, uh, you know, it's been frustrating. It's been disheartening. Yeah. Uh, the good thing is a lot of the shows basically just rebooked us for next year. Um, so we already have um, close to 40 shows on the calendar for next year and another 10 to 12 that are. Yeah, uh, we're losing we're losing our connection again a little bit on, on this end, Paul. Um, if it works, so you know, fingers crossed that things are going to open back up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I'm I'm losing your connection a little bit on my end, and I I lo actually lost myself for a bit there. Um, that's it's it just that? it's been, it's been a real hard year for. I, musicians all over the place and you guys you guys were on that upward trajectory you were you know the last time i had you know i had saw i saw you guys what three four years ago and i remember last summer yeah, you pretty early on we're just on fire i mean the that i i think i did a couple of videos on you had like eight thousand people showing up for gigs and that's yeah. crazy yeah, it's, you know, like you said, it's been getting bigger every year. It's, it's pretty much almost been doubling each year. Um, you know, Jason reformed with this lineup in 2016. So this was our fifth year with this lineup. And it pretty much doubled every year. And we were kind of on that same trajectory, you know, for 2020 before, before the lockdown happened. So, you know, disappointing. Hopefully we'll be able to kind of just jump right back into it next year. Um, we did make one change in the band, which yep. I'm not sure everybody is aware of. Um, our keyboard player, Troy Sands, um, had to leave the group. Uh, Troy is actually a doctor, so yes. he has a real job. Um, you know, most of us work outside of the band, right. but Troy actually has a real important job. And with all the additional travel we were supposed to start doing this year, the scheduling just didn't work for him. Um, so he had to step down and he was really disappointed. And we were too. Uh, Troy's a great guy. Yeah, um, he stepped down. So we auditioned a number of people, you know, we tried to find somebody local and uh, it just didn't pan out. And our sound guy, uh, TC Cable, spent years uh, in Nashville running sound and touring with different bands. And he originally moved out to Nashville to join a Christian act back in the 80s called 2020. Yeah, and, uh, he was still friends with the keyboard player. And TC likes to share our videos because he mixes our front of house. And he says, yeah, this is the band I work with. Listen to how good this sounds. <laughs> And, uh, you know, Ernie told him, well, hey, if they're ever looking for a keyboard player, let me know I'm interested. Yeah. And we found out a week later that Troy had to leave. So TC's like, hey, I got a guy. Um, he's from Nashville. And that's he lives nine hours away from the rest of us. But he's retired. Mm -hmm. He loves playing keyboards. He's really, really good. And um, 
he's he's on board. He jumped on board this summer, actually back in the spring, but then everything started getting canceled. Um, his first show with us was going to be the first one that got canceled because of COVID. Yeah. So he played the three shows with us this summer that we've done. And we've got uh, we've got three nights in a row coming up at Music Box Supper Club in early November. Good. Um, and then another fundraiser. And then we're actually doing a, a big private uh, company Christmas party in December. So that should be fun. So we've got a few more shows on the calendar this year. Uh, really looking forward to next year. But so, yeah, we were able to do that transition, you know, kind of during our downtime. But we really want to get out there and start playing again. Yeah, I mean, uh, you guys, if you're if you're coming down to Florida, let me know. I mean, they've opened up down here a bit more um, where I know bars and restaurants are they're operating at full capacity. These venues, though, are kind of what they're doing, unfortunately, is they're they're making their own rules. Even with what's been happening, they continue to kind of like the 25 capacity you were talking about. It's just, yeah. that's just dumb. Then don't even, right. don't even yeah. bother telling us, you know? <laughs> right. Exactly. You might as well just shut us down. Well, and the other thing up in Ohio is uh, they changed the rules for the bars. So not only did our journey tribute lose all these shows, but even our bar bands did. Um, and a couple months ago, they came up with this crazy ruling that, well, the bars have to stop serving the alcohol by 10. You can't sell alcohol after 10 and you have to be done drinking it by 11. I mean, a lot of these venues, the bands didn't start till nine o'clock. So that's kind of throwing all this out of whack. So now we're doing a lot of like send up seven to 10 shows and things like that. But it's like, man, people aren't ready to go out right after work. Right. You know, right. but now the bars are closed at 11 and it's just, it's just nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, you guys were on such a roll. Um, you know, J Jason Kelty, talk about him for a minute. Cause he's, he's a special dude the way he sings, man. He is. Um, you know, he's got a gift. He can actually mimic a lot of different singers. Uh, our, you know, the cover band Jukebox Heroes, he sings everything from, you know, Boston to Kansas, uh, a little bit of Foreigner, Cheap Trick, Van Halen. So he can do all these different voices, but you got a lot of cover band singers that can do a lot of different voices. But, you know, Steve Perry is a special beast. Um, yeah. <laughs> and there's no, you know, there's a couple other guys that I think are really close to Jason. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you know who they are because you've talked about them on your show too. Um, yeah. You know, they're really good. Um, but Jason just has this this thing. And, you know, and obviously he's so into Journey. You know, he studied all the videos. So not only does he have the voice, but he's got the outfits and the mannerisms and all that to go with it. And, um, you know, it's really cool. And I th think I've had this discussion with you before, but when we were putting this band together with this lineup, um, you know, and we were learning these songs, you know, our goal is to do it you know, pretty much note for note, just like a journey concert, right? Um, as much as we can. And and Jason is such a good musician because he can play every instrument besides being able to sing. He can play bass, he can play guitar, he can play keyboards, he can play drums. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's he's played drums in a Rush tribute band before, so wow. the guy can pretty much play anything. And when we were put, putting these songs together, if there was a bass part that I couldn't quite hear or figure out, or Steve was missing one note in the guitar lead, or Michael was missing a fill, you know, Jason would be like, "No, it's like this, this, and this," and he would kind of help us learn our parts too so you know when it comes to journey jason's jason's got it going on yeah and and that's i mean one of the reasons i think this band works is because of how hard uh he worked to get where he he got to as far as the you talk about the mannerisms um uh, the inflection vocally the phrasing which we talk a, a lot about in music when i when i hear certain singers that have you know, filled in or replaced and they don't, they don't do the phrasing correctly. Yeah. Fans don't know, like they don't know what to call that, but they right. know what it is, you know, like, they, no, yeah, they know that they can hear it or not hear it. Yeah. Yeah. He was supposed to hold that longer there, you know, uh -huh. or that just uh -huh. didn't sound right, you know, and um, yeah. <laughs> Jason, cause I've seen it live yeah. and in person. Um, you just, you, you stand there. And I did, I stood there with my mouth open the entire time. Cause it was just, yeah, it's, it's so funny. I can always tell when we get to a show, the people in the front that have never seen us before, because as <laughs> soon as we start our first song, their jaws just hit the floor because they're <laughs> totally impressed that they didn't, you know, they can't believe what they're hearing. And that's, it's really funny. It's really cool. Yeah. And you, and you, by the way, you get to sing all of the Greg Raleigh parts, which I, I think is, is pretty good. And you do a nice job with them. You really do. Thanks. That's uh, you know, again, I've been in cover bands for a long time too. And just trying to mimic, you know, the voice. Um, I don't necessarily have the best voice in the world, but I think I copy Greg Riley pretty well. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of others, I, you know, I don't have any kind of range like Jason does or anything like that. Although I have a pretty good falsetto. So I get to cover the high harmonies too. 
Uh, but the Greg Riley stuff is really fun. Uh, I really enjoy doing it. So. And so for next year, you guys are, if you booked already, you rescheduled, what's going on with that? We have a lot of the shows that got canceled for this year, got rescheduled for next year. I've got about 40 on the books right now for escape another 10 to 12 that, you know, we're in negotiations trying to pick a date or finalize numbers and things like that. Um, so it should be a pretty good year. Um, you know, with this, with this lockdown, um, you know, kind of as soon as this hit and bands started getting affected, my wife, you know, she's also a musician. She's in a couple of my bands and she said, you know, I don't think a lot of bands are going to survive this. And mm -hmm. she's been right. I mean, we've seen bands, you know, left and right around, especially around here, they've just fallen by the wayside or people quit and they got to try to find a replacement. And, you know, a lot of musical chairs and bands around here. And it's just, you know, I think people are just giving up. And especially when you get to be my age, I mean, you called me a young man, I think earlier, and I, I appreciate that, but, um, <laughs> you know, I'm going to be 56 pretty soon. So, um, you know, I, my, my younger days are behind me, but I think a lot of people, especially when they get to be our age, they think, you know what, it's really not worth it anymore. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to give up and move on. I'll go see my friends if they're playing. But, um, you know, I, I've got a really good friend that plays in a band in Youngstown about an hour from here and they lost two of their guys. And so they're scrambling to try to get replacements. And, you know, it's, it's been tough. Yeah. Yeah. Now um, you and your wife have a new band. Talk about that. We do. We actually have two bands, um, which are okay. very exciting. We have a band called the color nine. And Color Nine's actually been around for about five years and it started as an acoustic duo. And this was before I met my wife. Um, she had an acoustic duo with a gentleman guitar player. Here's just the two of them. Um, and then eventually they added a keyboard player. Well, they added like a conga player to kind of help keep it together. And then they added a keyboard player. And then I, when I started dating Melanie, I joined on bass and then the congas weren't really enough to keep it together. So she added a drummer. So it actually morphed from a, you know, an acoustic duo into a full band. Um, and now it's a full five piece band. Um, but because of the lockdown, um, a couple of our members left, yeah. but fortunately we were re able, able to replace them with two completely amazing musicians. Um, so we did our first show a couple of weeks ago. It was a private party and it just, this new lineup just knocked it out of the park. So that place has already booked us again for next year. We got a lot of stuff in the pipeline for that band. Um, so that's real exciting. And even, you know, since that morphed into a full band, Melanie's heart is still to do acoustic yeah. because when you're doing acoustic and it's all stripped down and stuff, people really hear, you know, kind of what's behind the music, sure. you know, there's no tracks, there's no big production or what it's just, you know, it's just music. Yeah. And, um, we've done a couple of acoustic gigs over the past couple of years, but didn't really have a solid lineup because we didn't really have a guitar player that was really into doing acoustic like we were. Well, when I started, uh, my sticks tribute, which we'll get to in a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, I reconnected with a former guitar player of mine named George McGrew. And George and I were in a classic rock band called Eclipse um, about. Yeah. You kind of froze up on us here, Paul, again. I think we got a, we got a, a weak connection there again. You might have to talk about that again. Can you hear me? All right, having a few technical issues here with the Zoom, um, but hopefully we'll get Paul back. Paul was talking Let about. Let me. Uh, well, he's he's still trying to. He's, yeah. oh. I, you know what? I'm going to go in the other room because it may work better on my end. All right, no problem. Uh, you um, head to the other room, and uh, we'll do what we do, which is stalling. Okay, so <laughs> again, uh, Paul Seuss, the bass player for. Escape the ultimate journey tribute band is now um, changing locations. Hopefully we'll, we'll have a, a better connection. This, you know, this tech stuff, it's, it's okay. It's fun, but sometimes it uh, doesn't cooperate. Um, but it looks like we're getting, when it works. Yeah, it is great when it's for. So, um, so you could start, start over again with what you were saying about um, the, the acoustic band with you and your wife. So yeah, so after the Color Nine morphed from an acoustic duo into a full band, uh, Melanie still wanted to do acoustic and we talked about it for a while and we couldn't really find the right guitar player that fit. And um, once I reconnected with George McGrew, my former guitar player, um, because he came to recruit me for his Sticks tribute band, we were talking to him about doing acoustic and he said, oh yeah, I'd love to do that. Um, so we put 
uh, we put MPG together. MPG is our acoustic trio, and it stands for Melanie, Paul, and George. Nice. Something simple, something catchy. Yep. Um, we did our first show a couple weeks ago. It went great. We've got two shows coming up this weekend. Um, a lot of the bars here, since they limited their capacity to 50%, uh, they've gone away from the full bands because they can't afford to pay them if only right. half the number of people can come in. So a lot of these bars are actually doing acoustic acts now and not doing full bands. So we thought, well, that's another benefit to kind of putting this thing together now. So um, we've got two shows coming up this weekend um, that we're really excited about. And I think I'm gonna to try to film one of those and put together some demo videos because we don't really have anything online right now. Yeah. Um, we've been practicing in our basement a couple times a week and we did that one show, which we weren't able to record. So um hopefully we're gonna have some video for that that we'll be able to get uh, get up and running cool so that'll be cool um so yeah so you know like i said we've kind of taken the color nine to the next level during this shutdown and we've come up with mpg and then i'm also um you know we're also getting the sticks tribute off the ground and that is also really exciting um yeah i've actually seen sticks a number of times a couple times with journey right um but those bands work very well together and, yeah uh, uh, hopefully I'll be able to do some double shows next year with the two bands, you know, at the same venue on the same night. That would be really cool. So nice. Now um, talk about uh, MPG, like what you do acoustic, but what, what do you do your own music? Do you do covers? What are you doing? We do covers um, pretty much anything from the sixties until today. Nice. Um, and, but what we're doing is there's a lot of acoustic, uh, acoustic acts out there and they all kind of tend to do the same style of music. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're doing everything, you know, we're doing Blondie, uh, we're doing Harry Chapin, yeah. um, we're doing Sticks. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of, oh, it, it's really, it's a really cool mix. I know we've started to work on a couple of songs that we're, we're not ready to do yet, but we're talking about doing some Triumph, some Ooh, Docking. Nice. So, you know, it's not just your same old acoustic stuff that everybody else is doing. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's really a lot of fun. And George is an amazing guitar player. Um, and I think you saw one of his videos. He's actually recorded a lot of solo songs that he's written and he plays all the instruments and he you know, records it in his home studio. And he is an amazing talent. Um, when I got him to join Eclipse a few years ago, well, 10 years ago now, yeah. so long ago, um, you know, I just, I'm just blown away by this guy. Yeah. Um, I mean, funny story. He came to audition for Eclipse. We were a classic rock band, you know, 70s, but we had kind of started doing like a little mini journey tribute as part of our show. Yeah. Uh, and so he came to audition, he, you know, he passed the audition with flying colors and then our keyboard players said, well, hey, George, you know, do you know any journey? Yeah, not really my cup of tea, but I've heard the songs, you know, he's like, what do you want to do? Fred said, well, let's do separate ways. Mm. Okay. I figured, okay, we'll get through the song, you know, and, and, it, and it'll be well. Not only did he get through the song and nail it note for note, he nailed the lead note for note on a song he's heard before but never learned. Wow. Because the guy can hear something and he can just replay it. He's got total recall. It's crazy. Yeah, that that is that is a gift. Sounds like he's uh, he's like Jason Kelty on guitar. <laughs> he is. And actually, it's funny because after I got George to join Eclipse, um, our singer quit and like six months later we basically went six months without a singer George and I just split the vocals and I got Jason out of retirement to join Eclipse so that was kind of what got Jason back up and doing doing the escape thing again because he had taken a couple of years off so um, you know the three of us worked together in that band for a while and it was a uh, it was a lot of fun um, you know with the vocals that we have and everything and, but what's great about acoustic is George's playing style it's almost like it sounds like he's playing two guitars at once yeah. Because he's playing the rhythm and then he's playing the solo over the top of the rhythm. I don't know how that he does it. Yeah, that that I mean, not not to mention Eddie Van Halen, but that sounds Eddie Van Halen ish. It really yeah. it really does. I was talking about that in a video the other day. Um, how did you just just as an offhand topic here? How are you taking that? That was crazy, huh? It was. I mean, he's been sick for a while, so it you know it wasn't a. I guess a total shock, although I don't think he was real public about his fight with cancer and all that, like other artists have been. Right. Um, you know, obviously it's a, a, a shock because he's not that much older than we are. Yeah. You know, and it's just, I think that hit everybody really hard. Um, I actually, I think at our show, uh, at our shows this week, I think George is going to play like a little mini tribute to Eddie. Um, I think he said something about maybe playing uh, Cathedral on a little guitar or something like that, you know, just a couple of, a couple of tributes to Eddie. So, 
I mean, everybody does eruption, so he can do that one, but you know, so does every other good guitar player. <laughs> right. But, uh, right. But yeah, that, you know, that's rough, um, you know, but it's just another thing we got to face as we get older, you know? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it, it's I think you hit the nail on the head, though. I, I don't think because it, it was it was kind of a private struggle that he was having. And, and Van Halen as a band, as a community, they've always kind of kept everything really close to the vest, whether they're going right. to tour, you know, who's in the band, who's not yeah. in the band and so forth. And then, you know, this just his son just drops this on Twitter and it was like, holy crap. Um, so. I think a lot of people, including myself, were a little bit uh, caught off guard by just yep. right now, 65 years old, done. So it's just a sad thing. And it's another, see, one of the things that I struggle with here is, you know, I understand that the music that I promote right now is not in the majority. You know what I mean? It's not yep. the majority style. Uh, and when you, you lose a guy like Eddie Van Halen, you know, to me, it's kind of like losing an Elvis or a John Lennon, or right. you go through the years and you look back, George Harrison, when he passed, you look at these monumental figures and you're like, okay, rock and roll, you know, here comes another sort of dagger into the heart of rock and roll. Um, and it's up to guys like you and guys like me to some degree to just, Hey, the torch is still lit. It may not be yeah. as hard as it once was, but we're still here and we still love it. You know? Yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's a good thing about, and, and our tribute, maybe not so much because obviously journey is still together and touring and sticks is still together. Actually sticks is kind of doing two tours at once because six does theirs and Dennis does theirs. It's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. And that's fine. They're both amazing. I've seen them both live. Yeah. I've seen Dennis with his show. I've seen six with Dennis and without Dennis and they're always an amazing show, yeah. but you know, it's the tribute bands that are carrying on for these bands because you know, someday journey is not going to be around and someday yeah. sticks is going to be around you know, and you've got these tributes out there now to bands like the Beatles that, you know, obviously can't tour anymore, you know, and now the same thing's going to be with Van Halen. We've got a, we've got a local uh, tribute band to Van Halen here in Cleveland, you know, so now there's going to be even more interest in, you know, in going to see them because they can't see the real Van Halen anymore. So. Yeah. And, and that's a really good point. And, you know, for fans of this music, and I, I was talking about this three years ago when I first heard you guys and, journey was kind of you know they weren't getting along yeah. <laughs> all that well at that particular moment as you recall and you know a lot of things were kind of up in the air would they continue would they not continue and mm -hmm. i'm like in the meantime look over here you yeah. know um yeah. tell uh, the audience what part of ohio are you guys in in case somebody wants to check out your website you could talk about the website talk sure. about like just if if i'm a journey fan hardcore and in November, I want to come and see you guys. How do I do that? Explain it all. Sure. Well, uh, the band is basically based out of the Cleveland, Ohio area. I actually live in Canton, which is an hour south of Cleveland, yep. um, home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So that's kind of Canton's big claim to fame these days. Right. Um, but, you know, mainly Northeast Ohio, although we do travel across the state. You know, we travel to Indiana. We travel to Pennsylvania. We've done shows in New York. Uh, we got a show in Kentucky that we were supposed to do this year that got rescheduled for next year. So pretty much the Midwest. Um, our shows coming up next month are at a place called the Music Box Supper Club, which is right on the shores of Lake Erie in Cleveland. Um, and we usually play there on Black Friday every year. That's kind of our annual Black Friday concert. But again, they're limited to 50% capacity. Mm -hmm. So the owner came to me and she said, well, you know, this isn't really going to work. How about we add a second night? And that way half the people can, that were, you know, out of your 2000 people or however many come in, I think it's, I don't know, 1800, whatever it is, you know, half can come one night and half can come the other night. I said, okay, let's do that. So, but we had to move it because they already had, you know, Thanksgiving was the day before and they were already booked the day after. So we had to move it up a couple of weeks to the 12th and 13th yep. of November. And by the time people swapped their tickets and all that stuff, she came back to me. She said, well, both of the shows are still oversold. And I said, well, do we want to add a third night? Nice. Said, Let me just make sure with Jason, you know, he's up to singing three nights in a row because, you know, doing Steve Perry three nights in a row is a little bit taxing on the voice. Yeah. Um, and he said, yeah, that's fine. We can do that. So we actually added a third show. So November 12th and 13th are both sold out. I believe there are still some tickets left for Wednesday, November 11th. Um, you can get ticket information 
from the link on our website, which is www.journeytribute.com or from our Facebook page. Um, you can find Facebook, uh, you know, Escape the Journey Tribute. It's easier to find if you use E5, C4, P3. But if you're not sure about that, go to our website first and, you know, journeytribute.com. There's a link from there to our Twitter page, to our Facebook page, so you can find us there. And you still have um, links to maybe some videos, some samples of your uh, repertoire, good examples of the live show, which um, really do. blow and, people away. Yeah, and actually, um, I started my own YouTube channel. So if you want to follow me on YouTube, uh, Paul Seuss, P-A-U-L-S-O-O-S. Um, I have a lot, I probably have, I want to say about 50 or so uh, live escape songs from different shows over the past few years um, um, on my channel. So you can go check that out there. Um, I'm also going to be uh, starting uh, playlists on my YouTube channel for the other three bands, um, for MPG, for The Color Nine, and for Best of Time. So, uh, you know, we're working on video footage for those three acts, but that'll all be out there too. So if you follow me on YouTube, um, you can watch Escape whenever you want to. Um, every song that we do is up there at least once, you know, some two or three <laughs> times. So Yeah. Yeah. Amen, brother. Good, good stuff. Um, I want to thank Paul Seuss for being on the show today. Um, Paul's a good friend um, and helped uh, my operations out here in the early days and gave me a lot of encouragement. So I just publicly, I want to thank Paul here on YouTube for all this support and for the, actually the whole band who, you know, have been great, um, been like buddies, friends that I didn't know I had basically. Um, and still to this day, it's a great relationship. And well, we, we appreciate it as well, Dave. Um, you know, you were really instrumental as we were building in 2016 and 17, getting the word out there. And, and we've got people from all over the world that follow us now because they first saw us because of you. Um, and people have even come out to our shows. People have traveled from out of state, from North Carolina, from New York, from New Hampshire. They've traveled to Ohio to come see our shows because you turned them on to us. So we appreciate that as well. So, uh, it's exciting, um, you know, looking forward to big things, uh, you know, coming up next year, you know, not only with Escape, but with the Color 9 and MPG. And then once we get this Sticks tribute, Best of Times up and running, I'll get back on with you and we'll talk about some Sticks. Yeah, sounds good. We do have a lot of Sticks fans here because I <laughs> I do yes. a lot of videos on that topic. I've watched that, them. <laughs> I, wish, I wish the boys would just get back together one more time and I, I would leave them all alone. But um uh, until that happens, or if it never happens, at least we've got maybe uh, another band that people can go and check out. That would be awesome. And, and we're excited. Just a real quick blurb about that. There are some other Sticks tribute bands out there. There's a couple in New York, a couple in California, I think one in Missouri, one in Texas. Um, all those bands have one singer that sings everything. We actually have a Dennis Young that plays keyboards, and nice. we have a Tommy Shaw that plays guitar. And Tommy Shaw is the aforementioned George McGrew that plays in MPG with me. Um, and it's exciting. It's going to be dead. It's no tracks. It's just going to be the five guys on stage and you're going to dig it. So awesome, brother. Awesome. I, I cannot wait to hear that. All right. Well, again, I want to thank Paul for being on the show today. Again, check out uh, all that information that he gave you and for everybody again, thanks for tuning in and I will see you really soon.